Hello, my name is Nisha Holmes, and I work as a senior consultant on the experts team at Analysis Prime. And today I'm going to discuss a new function that's available for add in Microsoft Office SAP.timeoffset. Now, this is available for the latest release of QRC1 of 2024. Now, the current restrictions on this particular function is it only works on hierarchies. And you can't use the function for SAP BW and SAP S for HANA data sources at the current time. Now, when writing the formula, we, we will also include the arguments table name or a data source. We'll have a reference date, an offset value from that date, what type of display we want to use, whether it's a member ID or a description or a combination of the two, and uh, the orientation of that display. Now, the final argument we will not be going over today, but it is available, which is dimension setting. Okay, this is the workbook I've set up. And you can see that I've built two tables. One is using a SAP get data formulas. As you can see here, I'm just pulling in I'm the source along with the account. So the dimension is account, and the member ID is here, 5,000. And then I bring, I'm bringing the member ID date in, which is up here. And then the version is pulling in from here. Now, to get this date, what I've done is use the SAP time offset. And then I reference the table. I brought in the table source. Now, instead of just typing in DS1, I certainly could reference this cell like I did before. And in this case, I'm also using the reference date, which is right here where I've calculated that. <clears throat> and I'll show you that in a moment. So this is my reference date. And then I'm not looking back any dates any time period, and I'm going forward one, two time period. So I'm bringing in this date here that I'm referencing. I'm not looking back any date, so that's my reference date. So that's my zero date. And then I'm looking forward two periods. And so it's, it's carrying that forward. So you can see there's, it's part of that formula here. So, as you can see down here, you can also do it where you look back a period. So in this example, they would be using the reference table two. The year is 2022. That's the reference date. They're actually hard coding that in. They're looking back one year, which would be 2021. So and then they'll have 2022, 2023 and 2024. So the way they have it set up, it would show 2021 here, no months, so 2021, 2022, 23, and 24. So you can also look back, not just forward. So, and my table down here does show how that works. So you're gonna have that table name, the reference date, the offset value, and you can you can use multiple offset values. So you can do minus one, you can do minus two, and so forth. So as you can see here, I didn't do minus one. I certainly could, and it would go back. <clears throat> so to get my reference date, what I've done is this one. I have a drop down here, and I concatenate it. So it's, it's that reference date is how SAC will view that and we'll be able to read that number. But it's easier for your users, your end users, to automatically put a date in there, right? So uh, to reference a date, I should say. So here, if I go, I could drop down here and say, I wanna look at 2025 or uh, month 05, and you'll see it carries right through. And it will calculate and bring in those correct numbers. And I could do, you know, 2020 or 07, right? Same thing, and it'll, it'll bring in those numbers. Now, 
the table, this table here is a little different. This is just a table I built. And if we look at that, we look at designer, you can see it's an actual table I built. We're not just using the get formula. So the way this works is <clears throat> we're still using that time offset right here. I'm using the same time offset that I did over here. And then, but what we need to do is then override this date, these dates with um, the SAP override dimension filter. So to do that, you can see I've overwritten it, right? But I don't have on this, on this particular worksheet, I am not automatically refreshing. So if I look at my workbook preferences, the workbook refresh is uh, set to default, refresh manually. So if I wanted it to automatically refresh every time I opened it or changed something, it would automatically do it here. So in order for me to, the way my workbook is set up, to for the, these changes to carry through on this table that I've built, I actually need to refresh the table. So you can see down here, I have a, I have a reference for this table where I'm, I'm, I'm getting the table status and you can see the table has not been refreshed and so that's why it's not changing based on this and because I have a manual refresh. So to refresh it, I will click on the table and I will ask to refresh the table. And there you go. So now I have July 11, or July 2022, August 2022, and September 2022. So let's just look really quick at the orientation here. So you can see, here's my offset. I've got the, um, got the table name. I have the reference date, which is this reference date right here which was the concatenated date from this. And then I have um, the, the reference date and then I have the periods that I want to look at. So I'm looking at the reference date is my is zero. Then one and two is one period ahead of the refer of that reference date and two periods ahead of a reference date. And now zero is the display. So you have three options or four options for the display. You can either do uh, zero for ID default, one for description, two for ID and description, and then three for description and ID. And you can either orientate this, how you're displaying it, either horizontally like I've done. I have it number one here is horizontal, which is the default, or I could do it vertically. Um, I chose to do it horizontally, as you can see. So just a quick reference on how I've done this. Um, you know, you could hide these columns, but um, this is where I'm pulling in that, those columns. And um, to, to get this, to get these, I'm pulling in the year I'm choosing here, and then I'm doing a, um, a VLOOKUP for, for the month I'm looking at to, to um, to uh, populate the month as well. So that's how I'm getting these months to display up here like this in this table. This one will automatically do it because it's a table that was built using just a table, the, you know, table builder versus this is the get formulas table. So I hope that helps. Um, it's, it's very handy and I'm sure you can use it in, in a lot of instances uh, when you're building your tables and good luck to you.